This is a hydraulic cylinder off of dad's log splitter. It's a four inch cylinder. And the uh, ram on it is two and a half inches. And I'm not sure how you measure the stroke on that, but the uh, ram is 24 inches long. Anyways, from here to here, here are some of the parts. So the seal inside here was leaking and finally gave way and broke. So I took it to a hydraulic shop to get some new seals and stuff and they said that there was some pitting and stuff inside there. So they uh, said they could sell me a new seal but it wouldn't fix it with the pitting but they could send it away to be machined and they could sell me an oversized seal. So this went to a machine shop and they took a couple thousandths off it and there's an oversized seal in there. And then, uh, yeah, new O-ring. They put on the piston, there's some new rings on the piston there, whatever you call those. And we've got a new O-ring here that moves to seal up here. So put everything back together and see if that fixes the problem. So we've got the ram and the vise. We got, uh, some protection around there so the jaws don't scratch it up and we need to just put the new o-ring in the seal in the seal groove here so we lubed it up with a bunch of hydraulic oil so we're not trying to install stuff dry here and we'll see if we can get this thing to slide in there it might take two hands yeah it's gonna take two hands here the way they keep these things from coming loose is they put a little center punch mark on here when they're assembled. So it puts just a little bit of a ding on the threads, if I can find it right here. So I'm going to need to use this part kind of as a press to screw this on because it's a pretty hard push. So I'm thinking that I can just clean that up a bit so this turns on there nice and uh, use that as a bit of a press to pop things into place and then unscrew this and, and assemble it for real. I've got it started just lined up here and big pipe wrench. That's started. I just have to come past the seal on the inside yet, so I think we'll do that with the piston. Well, that's not quite going to work. I got a couple of bearings here that I'll just use as spacer. I put them in there. I got enough threads there I can stick the nut on there and that should press that right back on over the shaft. Doesn't take much, it's just more than a person can do with their muscles. Got a rubber mallet here, we'll see if it'll go on the rest of the way. Nice. Yeah, thing of beauty. Looks like that's the way it came off. Give that a wipe. Just wipe the inside of this out a little bit. I know it's good. I just took both hands and a little bit of tapping to get it on there. It rings in there nice. All we gotta do is put the nut on. So the nut's on. And you can see the center punch mark there 
on the shaft and on the nut is that's as tight as it was originally so i'll get my center punch out and i'll just give it a little tap just so that doesn't happen to work loose but don't want to go crazy because someday this might have to come off of here again what the inside of the cylinder looks like nice honed surface oh it's not brand new but it should work I'm hoping they've recessed it a little bit at the opening here so that this will push in far enough that I can get that thread started. Otherwise, that's going to be a bear to push in. But, uh, I guess we'll find out. So the piston is be down about here now. And we're just waiting for this O-ring to start to seal. The piston started pretty good. I used the weight of the ram to kind of push things down and tipped it up and then tapped on this with the rubber mallet just kind of gently and everything started feeding in there after a bit. So I'm hoping that I can, all I got to do is get it down to the threads here. And once those threads engage, then I'm off to the races. So I tapped it down with a rubber mallet until it, the threads are just Getting here, you could you could tell the sound changed a little bit. So it's touching now. We don't want to beat on it anymore because uh, we don't want to screw up the threads. So we're just going to turn this as gently as we can and just tap on it gently as we're turning it until our threads engage. And then we'll suck this all the way down. So I put a little bit of hydraulic oil on there for lube and turned it, but I couldn't tell if it was going in or not because it's a pretty slow process. So I set a set of calipers here just to make sure that things were engaging here. And obviously I've probably got four threads engaged now, so I can just keep cranking it down. I wish I had a, I guess a spanner wrench or whatever to go in them holes, but don't have one of them critters. I have to use this old girl here. It's an old iron one. And it doesn't weigh as much as a cylinder, but it's pretty close. <laughs> the cap's down tight now. I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna take a punch and just uh, punch these spanner holes just a little bit in the direction of tightening on the threads just to make sure they're seated. Uh, I'm not the first one that's been in here. It's chewed up. Somebody probably took it apart just like I did and chewed it up a little more than I would have liked to have done it. But sometimes when you're on the farm and you're working with old stuff, you just got to do what you got to do. I'm thinking this is probably the biggest cylinder we have on the place as far as diameter goes. It came with the splitter. It was a homemade jobby that we bought. Just somebody had it and we bought it. They made it out of scraps and odds and ends and I think it was only a hundred bucks. So not sure what one of these cylinders is worth new, but the cylinder itself is probably six hundred dollars so a guy can put fifty dollars worth of parts and a little bit of time and some machining into it maybe got two hundred dollars into it we'll see how much the machining bill comes to but certainly cheaper than a new six hundred dollar cylinder and this will put the hoses on and stick it on the splitter and see if she holds oil there's two different kinds of fittings on this, the way it came. This is a compression fitting. I guess that's what they call it. And that's just a pipe thread fitting. So in the compression fittings, the seal is actually made, the flange uh, screws on tight against that. Inside you can see the flange inside there. So the seal is actually taking place here all the threads do is, is hold everything together mechanically, and the seal actually happens here. 
on this side with the threaded opening, the seal and the holding together is actually happening with the threads. And on those kind, you need to use some kind of thread sealant, like Teflon tape or whatnot. And I'll just explain why in a second. Good and tight. So when threads are formed, V threads are formed like that on the internal and the external threads, and they engage like that. So a lot of times it's tight on one side a little bit, or on the other side a little bit, or sometimes even both. But regardless, when the threads are formed, there's going to be, even on a perfect threaded fitting, this is the top part of it here, there's gonna be a little gap here. This won't be perfectly sealed up into the bottom. And inevitably, even if there's a perfect sealing surface on all of these all the way around, there's always a little bit of a hole in here that goes helically around inside, and you'll get fluid leak through there, even if these are perfect. So that's why you need to use thread sealer of some kind, Teflon thread or what, or Teflon tape or something, because even with perfect condition, these things are still gonna leak without it. Whereas um, it's pointless to use it on a compression fitting, or this one doesn't have an, an ORB fitting because the O-ring is actually doing the seal. But on threaded fittings like that, you need to use it, and uh, it'll seal up. 95% of it. The, the, it's not the perfect solution, but it's the simplest one for, for that use, and a lot of older stuff has that on there. Quite often you'll see those things are, have a little bit of oil or dirt around them just because the method of sealing isn't perfect, but it's uh, pretty common. So I'm gonna put some tape on that and stick the other side together. So I got the thread tape on there. You don't want to get any inside the cylinder or inside the hole because there's lots of little tiny holes inside hydraulic stuff and you don't want anything to get in there and plug it up. We we'll try and keep it as clean as we can under the circumstances. It's just a roll of Teflon tape. So on these national pipe threads, the threads are tapered so it should tighten up before it bottoms out. So things are good and tight there. And I think we're ready to take this thing and stick it on the splitter and see if it works.